This is not a typical model car. Nope, you can actually play a lot of games with it. It's absolutely nuts. Stay tuned. It's a time for... Mm, pick it from China. <laughs> so when you're going to be looking on Aliexpress, you can find the most wicked products there. And sometimes they make no sense. And this is absolutely one of those. This makes no sense whatsoever. And I didn't pick it up for quite a long time. And the reason is that it comes with a hefty price tag. But at first I was thinking this thing can only play some 8-bit stuff. But realizing, reading the, the horrible description on the freaking page, this thing can actually play way more than only 8-bit. <laughs> they call this thing the F2 handheld racing game console. That's a mouthful. 3-inch display, IPS. This, so, this thing does have some very nice specs. But this device belongs with the Family Pocket series. And there was an interesting feature back in the day that we had a real-time, let's say, preview dynamic save. Or in other words, we had a quick load, quick save and previews when we're searching for a certain game. Over 5,000 support of different games, 16-bit and 32-bit, over like 10 different emulators. Where this thing comes installed with all kinds of emulators, is it really worth picking up? Because where this thing looks pretty damn cool. It comes in different colors. I think it is red, blue, and black if I'm saying it correctly. And yeah, this thing looks really cool. You can put it for display or you can actually play games because this is what it is. It's absolutely nuts in my opinion. And the overall, let's say, way how it looks at the side, there's not really actually a car. You can just not play with it as a car. It's just an handheld that looks like a car. Yep, then we're having select and start. A, B, X, Y, or X, Y, they change it out. And there are no shoulder buttons. So that is going to be a problem. Reset and the D-pad. And the D-pad, oh. so first of all, does not have a really cheap feel to it, I must say. But it just is a very strange, huge button in my opinion. What for other products can we find inside of the box? The Family Pocket Handheld Racing. And uh, this is just an overall quick note what it is about how you need to let's say check plug it in and how it works it seems to be that's it volume control but I will show you later on in here we're finding the two cables that we're going to need this is the micro USB for charging and data transfer if needed and then we're going to get a mini jack to chill up for the AV out but let's do a quick tour on the device itself so everything is basically on top, the charging port, the AV out, but also the on and off switch. So when booting it up, that's kind of cool in my opinion. Let's do that again. We're going to have the showcase of a car and that's it. And then at the bottom, here we can find the volume control. And the audio itself, it's absolutely not bad, it's bad at all. But where they hit one of the speakers, that is kind of cool. So at the front, we're having the grills. And one of the grills is actually where the first speaker it will be. A little bit of one running one speaker. But the display, yep, absolutely. This is an IPS display. And that's kind of cool. But when it comes to the display, it's very vibrant and very colorful. It will be in 3-inch, but that it is in full EPS panel makes it, in my opinion, a little bit better. The menu. So we're going to see that we have in Game Boy Color, Game Boy Classic, Master System, Game Gear, PC Engine. Let's go to the other side, Mega Drive, Super Famicom, Arcade, and Neo Geo. Okay, that's kind of cool. So when you're going to be booting up, oh, indeed, we have a very nice menu. Don't stutter a little bit in the beginning, but that's actually it. Pressing select start and all the other buttons doesn't do anything. We have an indication for the battery life, it's still green, also it's going to be shown in the screen itself. But let's try a couple of games. One thing I need to point out when it comes to the display, you do see some back bleeding coming from this side. But yeah, that's it. Pressing also the button will give you this quick load and quick save. And that's kind of cool, so when you're saving, you're also going to see a preview. So, I think it's pretty damn awesome. So, let's do another save. Here we can save number two. And if you want to load up, you can choose the different parts. 
So let's boot up the first game and let's see how the overall emulation is. The emulation is quite nice. I don't see any screen tearing going on. Full speed emulation. And the audio itself goes really loud. All the sound effects are here. So I must say that I'm quite surprised when it comes to the over emulation part. So let's go and scrolling through a couple of games. Depending on this file size, when it comes to the arcade, we do have a, let's say, loading time, like the old school days. It's going to be extracting the file. Sometimes some of the files have been zipped. So it's basically like checking it out, unpacking it and booting it all up. If you want to use games in combination with the D-pad, like Metal Slug, that works pretty damn well. So let's see how it went for the fighting games. And I was afraid of this. The inputs of this thing are absolutely horrible. I can get some moves out from the right side. It can be in personal handicap. Yeah, you really need to get used to this. This is not one of my favorite game systems to actually play. There we go. I can get the moves out, but... So, from this point on, I am quite surprised actually how good this system plays. What makes it really worth it, in my opinion, is the beautiful IPS panel. Great audio. Let's move on to some 16-bit with Wild Guns, the Super NES. And the first thing I did notice, compared with the arcade stuff, the audio also sounds really good. No weird glitching or whatsoever going on. But the main problem we're having with devices like this particular car we're missing two shoulder buttons so we cannot play this game like it should be so that makes it pretty damn pointless to actually play these games and that's absolutely a completely missed opportunity next up let's try some mega drive or genesis and when it comes to this particular system there are playable games simply because we only need three buttons with some of them so that's in my opinion kind of cool. Emulation and audio wise there's nothing wrong here. It's kind of funny to be honest that we're nowadays having an overall very cool lineup of devices that can actually emulate everything 16-bit related no problem whatsoever. But okay, if you wanted to play some old school 8-bit games, that is not going to be an issue whatsoever. The one thing I was really curious about, like how will the navigation of the D-pad be? And I can tell you that I'm quite surprised that it works quite good. The only thing I don't really like about this thing is that the overall feel of it... Yeah, no, no, not in the way how I want to see a D-pad. But the input seems to be working just fine. Let's get into the retro nostalgia vibe over here with Sonic Chaos 4, the Master System. I did play this on the Game Gear back in the day. But so far everything I throw at the thing, it seems to be emulating just fine. I do wonder if they're going to be releasing another Family Pocket with more support. That is something I'm really curious about. Next up, some Game Boy Classic. This seems to be running without any problem. There are a lot of different systems on this and this device, and it's quite interesting to see how actually how good it all runs. So 
so there's nothing to complain actually here and I can tell you that is quite unique in my opinion because there's mostly always something they mess up and they actually did but that was purely for when it comes to the button input and let's check out how the TVI function works if it's going to be automatically switching through the display Okay, that is not how it's supposed to be. Turn it on and off. Let's see if it's going to be working at all. Okay, so that's absolutely a no go. There is something they mess up. But Wicked is not giving up. We have a second cable because I just want to give this thing the benefit of the doubt. And let's see if they're going to be working with the second cable. Still have a lot of interference. And, yep, we do have a TV out. So, this is not a hardware issue, it's more like a cable issue. And, yeah, so, if you're looking at this overall quality, maybe for the recording it doesn't look that bad. But I can tell you, it looks kind of washed out. Yeah, it's still very basic analog signal. But if you're going to put this thing on the CRT, I think you will still have a very cool image. But if you're going to check out the TVL function now, close up, I must say that I'm quite surprised. And also with the IV out, we do have an absolutely amazing overall performance. So it's clear that they can make something that seems to be working just fine. I still suck at this game. So where I know a lot of people want to see me do a teardown, I'm just going to be honest, I have no idea how to open this thing up besides completely destroying it. Because as if you just if you just look around and you just feel, there are a couple of stickers, but there is no way of, let's say, seeing how to open up. You do see some lines going on, and I've been like trying to get my tools in just to see if we can like lift something open, but there is no way in. And the only thing I'm doing actually with this is just damaging. And I was hoping to just unclick it and just see what is the stuff that we're going to have with hardware. But no, there's nothing to see in here. Because Wicked can't get it open. And I don't want to destroy it. I think this is most of the weirdest thing I've ever bought from iExtras when it comes to handheld related things. Yeah, is this actually good? Nah, I think the biggest bummer is missing out two buttons. A lot of 16-bit games cannot be played correctly. Yep, but overall, it's a cool idea. It's kind of funny. This thing is way too expensive in my opinion. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, and it will be great to see you in the next video.